Britain has suffered its first major losses in the Falklands conflict. The Ministry of Defence announced tonight that the destroyer Sheffield came under an Argentine missile attack. It later sank. All the crew who got out of the ship have been picked up, but the Ministry spokesman says there were casualties. 1982, the Falklands War. Unemployment hit 3 million. The IRA bomb Hyde Park. Tottenham retain at the FA Cup. But it wasn't all bad. The club's door next opened its first shop and the Barbican Centre was completed. And as we discussed last time, electronic music has already arrived and a new pop duo from my home county of Essex really captured my heart. This is Albums That Changed My Life. This is the story of Yazoo's Upstairs at Eric. <laughs> Richard and welcome to the latest episode of Albums That Changed My Life. In this episode we're going to go back to 1982. In football Liverpool won the league title again. Aston Villa conquered Europe while Italy won the World Cup. In tennis Jimmy Connors beat John McEnroe in the Wimbledon final while Alex Higgins won the World Snooker Championship. In the cinema Gandhi was released along with 48 Hours, Tootsie, E.T. and Sophie's Choice. On TV Channel 4 was launched and we saw the first episodes of Countdown and Brookside. Elsewhere, Wogan, Cagney and Lacey, Dynasty and Hill Street Blues also hit our screens for the first time, while in literature we saw the release of Life, the Universe and Everything and The Secret Life of Adrian Mole, aged 13 and three quarters. In music, The Tube aired for the first time and Dex's Midnight Runners had the year's biggest selling single with this pop classic. The year also saw the release of one of the greatest ever number one hits by one of my all-time favourite bands, The Jam. But it was a lightweight, fluffy synth-pop duo who really grabbed my attention in the summer of 1982. Vince Clark from My Neck of the Woods in Basildon had already had hits with the electro pop band Depeche Mode, but after leaving in late 1981, he set about finding a singer for a new song he had written. Alison Moye, another Basildon resident, had known Vince from their school days, but at the time she was a singer in a punk band, so it did seem a rather strange combination, but maybe that's why it worked. Their debut single, the electronic ballad Only You, was pleasant enough, but I have to admit I was never a big fan of that track, even less so since a simply awful cover version by The Flying Pickets. But I did love Moye's powerful yet soulful vocal. Looking from a window above, it's like a story of love. Can you hear me? However, it was the B-side of that single, Situation, that really opened my eyes and ears to the sound of Yazoo. In a theme you'll find throughout this series, I once again borrowed my sister's copy of Only You. And as I often did back then, I stuck the B-side on instead and discovered this wonderful tune. So I dress for every situation Moving through the doorway of a nation Pick me up and check the down Baby, I can't do without By now, I was already enjoying electro pop thanks to the Dare album we featured in the last episode, but for me, this took it to another level. So when Yazoo released their debut album, Upstairs at Eric's, in August 1982, I knew I just had to have it. Apart from the wonderful cover artwork depicting two mannequins with their legs and bodies separated, sitting at a table, staring at a slice of cake, the album itself was a work of genius. The name of the album was literally a reference to where it was recorded upstairs in the Blackwood studio in London under the watchful eye of producer Eric Ratcliffe. The album was recorded in the hours between 5am and 11am as that was the only time the studio was free, so much of it was done with minimal production. In fact, many of the tracks were recorded in just one take. The opening track, the second single, Don't Go, was an uplifting pop dance track. Now, as catchy as it was, it didn't really prepare me for what was to come. And from the opening beats of track two to pieces, I was hooked. Then Moye's soulful vocal kicked in, elevating the track to a new dimension. Write me a letter.
this would become a theme throughout the album. Later, we get Moye's incredible vocals over the haunting melodies of Tuesday. Winter calls. Green in your love on bright days. You grew sun blind. You thought me unkind. Spine tingling stuff. Even the throwaway pop disco beats of Bad Connection. Morning this morning, the curtains are shut. I'd ring you in the morning, but the phone's been cut. Can you hear me? I've been calling all day. Can you hear me? Didn't I bring your love down? You play your games, but the fact remains I'm the only one that can hold your reins. Didn't I bring your love down? Didn't I bring your love down all night? And goodbye, 70s. Oh. Your credit to the 30 faces you created To your headache to the shape of the 1980s I'm glad we don't hear you anymore I'm tired of playing in your fashion war Becomes something quite glorious with Moye at the mic but oddly, the highlight for me, both in 1982 and now, is the one track without YA's vocal, the crazy I before E except after C, featuring Vince's rambling, random excerpts from an instruction manual and loads of strange sound effects and overdubs. Inside, you can feel that. Outside, you can see the difference. Inside, stop. Inside, difference. Outside, out, stop. Inside, you can feel the difference. Feel the, you can difference, difference, difference. You can see the feel the difference. You can stop, stop and see that you can stop. You can see the difference. But like most of the album, it just works. Of course, this is quickly followed by the equally brilliant In My Room with its recital of the Lord's Prayer, something we had to say every day in school assembly at the time. And it was never quite the same after this. Our Father. Who art in heaven. Previously, I found that him boring, but suddenly it became the highlight of the day as I began to repeat Moye's lyrics in my head as everyone else was just droning along with the rest of the class. So apart from being a brilliant album that even 41 years later still sounds fresh, it was an album that brought to my attention the magic of a soulful female vocal. And from here, I discovered the delights of the likes of Dusty Springfield, Aretha Franklin and Diana Ross. At the age of 14, it appeared I'd finally found my tender side, at least until the Smiths arrived in 1983 anyway. But more of that in a future episode. Yazoo only released one further album, 1983's equally brilliant, more mature, but much darker, You and Me Both. And then they were gone. Moye went on to have a successful solo career. <laughs> Clark eventually formed Erasure with Andy Bell, who went on to become one of the biggest selling pop bands of the 1990s. Ooh, sometimes the truth is harder than the thing inside. Yeah. Despite all that success, I don't think either of them quite managed to top the remarkable and unique sound they created on Upstairs at Eric's. So while the summer of 1982 brought an end to the Falklands War and gave us that wonderful World Cup in Spain, 
for me, it will always be remembered as the summer of this unlikely couple from Essex and their slice of pop perfection that really left my turntable for the remainder of the year. And I still play now from time to time. This has been albums that changed my life. If you've enjoyed this episode, please give it a like. And why not consider subscribing to the channel? I'll be back very soon with another album that changed my life. But what one will it be next time? You'll just have to stay tuned to find out. Thank you.